It's Prince Charles like you rarely see him. He made a video to celebrate the 40th anniversary of... King Charles will eternally be barred from attaining the esteemed title of Great King due to the lingering shadows of his past indiscretions, particularly concerning his former spouse, Princess Diana. It is widely believed that the stains he has left upon the royal family and his loved ones, stemming from his extramarital affairs to the emotional anguish inflicted upon Diana and their children, are irreparable. In the wake of these scandals, King Charles initially chose the path of silence, allowing time to obscure the truth. However, in a recent revelation, he has mustered the courage to confront his inner demons, confessing to his transgressions and unveiling the harrowing tale of his past. Prepare yourself to hear the haunting narrative of his life. Charles begins the story by recounting the first moment he saw Diana. Charles and Diana's first meeting is often described as an unusual and fateful encounter, a story that Prince Charles himself recounted in a 1981 interview with The Telegraph. The initial meeting took place at Diana Spencer's family estate in Althorpe, a grand location with sprawling fields and historic buildings. More precisely, they met in a plowed field, an unlikely setting for the beginning of a royal romance. Here, Charles encountered a lively and attractive Diana whose youthful exuberance and spirited nature left a lasting impression on him. The encounter was unusual for two significant reasons. Firstly, Diana was only 16 years old at the time, a young teenager just beginning to navigate her way into adulthood. In stark contrast, Charles was 29, a mature adult with considerable life experience. This substantial 12-year age difference was notable and, in hindsight, might have been seen as an indicator of the potential difficulties they would face in their relationship. Despite this considerable gap, the age difference did not deter the initial attraction or the development of their relationship. The second noteworthy aspect of their meeting was the context in which it occurred. At the time, Prince Charles was romantically involved with Diana's older sister, Sarah Spencer. He was attending a shooting party hosted by Sarah, which is how he came to be at Althorpe and subsequently met Diana. This scenario was inherently complex, as Charles was a guest of his girlfriend when he first laid eyes on Diana. The fact that Diana captured his attention so quickly adds a layer of intrigue and suggests a meeting imbued with a sense of destiny. Despite these potential red flags, Charles was immediately drawn to Diana. During the party, he approached her and asked if she would show him the gallery at her home. Diana later recalled this moment fondly, as it marked the beginning of their acquaintance. Her recollection of the event hints at the significance it held for her, even at that early stage. Unlike what might be expected from a romantic tale, the relationship between Diana and Charles did not progress smoothly after their first meeting. Following their encounter at Althorpe, Charles continued his relationship with Diana's older sister, Sarah Spencer. The prince and Sarah went on a ski trip to the Klosters, a renowned Swiss resort. Photographs from this trip, snapped by paparazzi, showed the couple looking comfortable and close as they skied together in the snowy landscape. These images dashed any budding hopes that a romance between Charles and Diana might quickly blossom. However, the story took an unexpected turn. In Sarah Bradford's biography, Diana, Sarah Spencer revealed a crucial detail about her feelings toward Charles. She confided in a magazine that she was not in love with him and had no desire to marry him. This revelation was pivotal, leading to the end of Charles's relationship with Sarah and paving the way for his future with Diana. Charles and Diana's paths crossed again shortly after, at Prince Charles's 30th birthday party. Despite this encounter, they did not see much of each other until two years later. Their next significant meeting occurred at a house party, hosted by their mutual friend, Philip de Pass. It was here that an event marked by tragedy brought them closer together. During this gathering, news broke that Charles's great-uncle, Lord Louis Mountbatten, had been assassinated by the IRA. The shock and sorrow of this loss deeply affected Charles. 
In her book, Diana in Her Own Words, Diana recounted how this moment of vulnerability in Charles struck a chord with her. Seeing him grief-stricken at Lord Mountbatten's funeral stirred her compassionate nature, and she felt a strong urge to comfort him. Her consoling words resonated with Charles, creating an emotional connection between them. Diana later described feeling overwhelmed by the sudden attention from Charles, as she had never experienced such serious interest from a man before. Despite her initial trepidation, she soon grew comfortable with the burgeoning relationship. Their courtship developed charmingly. Prince Charles introduced Diana to some of his favorite pastimes, including teaching her how to fish. He also invited her to the royal family's Balmoral estate in Scotland, a significant gesture that indicated the seriousness of their relationship. During these early days, their romance seemed idyllic and full of promise, showing no signs of the turmoil that would later engulf their marriage. With a meeting seemingly orchestrated by fate and courtship that quickly captured public interest, the announcement of Charles and Diana's engagement came as no surprise. Their relationship, which began under unique circumstances, blossomed rapidly and became increasingly public. After just six months of dating, the couple officially announced their engagement through the Lord Chancellor on February 24, 1981. Diana's excitement and happiness were palpable, particularly during their joint interview with the BBC at Buckingham Palace. During this interview, Diana expressed her admiration for Charles, describing him as pretty amazing. Her enthusiasm was matched by Charles's own sentiments. He remarked that he was delighted Diana was willing to marry him, acknowledging the gravity of the commitment she was making. Charles also shared details about the proposal, which had occurred three weeks before the public announcement. He had chosen an intimate and private setting for this significant moment, proposing to Diana during a private dinner at Buckingham Palace. This setting, emblematic of both their private and public lives, added a personal touch to the otherwise grand and royal context of their engagement. The engagement marked a turning point in their relationship, moving it from a private courtship to a public spectacle that captivated the world. The announcement was met with widespread excitement and anticipation, setting the stage for what many hoped would be a fairy tale wedding and a harmonious union. Diana, with her youthful charm and grace, quickly won the hearts of the public, while Charles's selection of a bride from the English aristocracy resonated with traditional expectations. During their joint interview, Prince Charles revealed a touching detail about his proposal to Diana. He wanted to give her time to consider her answer, so he planned a trip to Australia, during which he hoped she would reflect on their future together. However, much to his surprise, Diana accepted his proposal straight away, indicating her wholehearted commitment to their relationship. Following this heartfelt moment, Diana swiftly made arrangements to transition from her previous life to her new role as Prince Charles's fiancé. One significant change was Diana's decision to move out of her apartment in Kensington, where she had been living with roommates, to reside in Clarence House until their wedding day. This move marked the beginning of her immersion into royal life and signaled her readiness to embrace her future as a member of the royal family. It was during this period, alongside her fiancé and on the grand stage of public scrutiny, that the world got its first glimpse of Diana's distinctive fashion sense and her now iconic engagement ring. For her debut appearance as Prince Charles's betrothed, Diana chose a striking cobalt blue skirt suit from Harrods, a choice that would set the tone for her future as a fashion icon. But it was the dazzling engagement ring adorning her finger that truly captivated the world's attention. The ring's design was exquisite, featuring a halo of diamonds set in 18-carat white gold, with the centerpiece being a magnificent 12-carat oval blue sapphire from Sri Lanka. The ring's unique design, a departure from the typical styles of royal engagement rings, drew considerable attention and admiration. Interestingly, 
The inspiration behind the ring's design added another layer of significance to this already remarkable piece of jewelry. According to Gerard, the esteemed manufacturer of the ring, its design was inspired by a brooch that Prince Albert had commissioned for Queen Victoria in 1840. This historic piece featured a large sapphire surrounded by 12 round diamonds set in gold. Diana wearing this historic piece as a ring was a departure from tradition, yet it served as a poignant symbol of her future role within the royal family. The interview where Prince Charles made his infamous remark about the meaning of love became a defining moment in the public perception of their relationship. As the couple sat together, facing questions about their feelings for each other, the world watched with bated breath. When asked directly if they were in love, Diana responded with unwavering certainty, stating, Of course. Her heartfelt affirmation seemed to echo the sentiments of a fairy tale romance unfolding before the world's eyes. However, it was Prince Charles's response that sent shockwaves through the public consciousness. With a notable awkwardness, he hesitated before replying, Whatever in love means, his gaze falling to the floor. This seemingly flippant remark from the future king cast a shadow over their relationship, sparking speculation and fueling doubts about the depth of Charles's feelings for Diana. For many, this moment marked the beginning of the cracks in their marital foundation. Diana's earnest declaration of love stood in stark contrast to Charles's ambiguous response, hinting at a disconnect between them that would only deepen over time. The public scrutiny intensified, with the media dissecting every word and gesture exchanged between the couple. Yet, despite the initial discomfort caused by Charles's remark, the couple pressed on with their plans for marriage. Diana's optimism and hope for their future together remained steadfast, buoyed by the excitement of their impending nuptials and the prospect of a life as a princess. Little did they know, however, that their marital woes were only just beginning. In the years to come, the pressures of royal life, coupled with personal struggles and external challenges, would test their relationship to its breaking point. The fairy tale romance that had captured the world's imagination would soon unravel, revealing the harsh realities that lay beneath the surface. Andrew Morton's revelations in Diana's infamous 1992 biography, Diana, Her True Story, in her own words, shed light on the tumultuous internal struggles Diana faced in the days leading up to her wedding to Prince Charles. According to Morton, Diana experienced significant doubts and hesitations about the impending marriage, even considering calling it off at one point. Initially, these doubts were merely fleeting thoughts, perhaps the natural anxieties that accompany any bride-to-be. However, the situation took a more serious turn when Diana stumbled upon a bracelet intended for Charles's former girlfriend, Camilla Parker Bowles, just days before the wedding. This discovery ignited a storm of emotions within Diana, intensifying her desire to halt the proceedings. It was at this critical juncture that Diana's sisters played a pivotal role in shaping her decision. They urged her to set aside her feelings of anger and confusion, reminding her that the arrangements for the wedding were already in motion, and it was too late to turn back. Their counsel resonated with Diana, providing her with the resolve she needed to push aside her doubts and proceed with the marriage. As the eve of the wedding approached, Diana found herself grappling with conflicting emotions. Despite her lingering uncertainties, she found solace in the support of her sisters and the symbolic gestures of reassurance from Charles. The night before the wedding, she engaged in a bridal party with her sisters at Clarence House, a moment of sisterly bonding amid the whirlwind of emotions. It was during this poignant moment that Charles reached out to Diana with a heartfelt gesture of affection. He sent her a gift from Buckingham Palace in the form of a signet ring bearing his Prince of Wales feathers, accompanied by a touching note expressing his pride in her and his anticipation for their future together. This gesture served as a poignant reminder of Charles's commitment to their relationship and his eagerness to stand by her side as they embarked on their journey together. 
The wedding of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, held on July 29, 1981, at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, was an unparalleled spectacle that captivated the world's attention. It was a grand affair that transcended the boundaries of tradition and marked a historic moment in British royal history. For the first time in 300 years, a British citizen was marrying an heir to the throne, a fact that added an extra layer of significance to the already momentous occasion. The sheer scale of the event was staggering, with a record-breaking 750 million people from 74 countries tuning in to witness the ceremony. The wedding was a testament to the enduring fascination with the British monarchy and served as a global celebration of love and tradition. The extravagant affair came with a hefty price tag, reportedly costing roughly $48 million and making it one of the most expensive weddings in history. Princess Diana, resplendent in a gown fit for a fairy tale princess, stole the show with her timeless elegance and grace. Her ivory silk taffeta gown, adorned with intricate hand embroidery and over 10,000 micro pearls, was a masterpiece of craftsmanship. The pièce de résistance was the Spencer Tiara, a family heirloom worn by Diana's sisters, Lady Sarah and Lady Jane, for their own weddings. As Diana walked down the aisle, she radiated joy and happiness, feeling like the luckiest girl in the world on her special day. Prince Charles, too, was overcome with emotion as he stood at the altar beside his bride. In a letter to his friend, Prince Chattels, he admitted that there were moments when he felt like crying from sheer joy. The love shared between the couple was palpable, evident in every glance and gesture exchanged between them. The world joined in the celebration, showering the couple with an outpouring of love and support. The New York Times reported that Charles and Diana received roughly 3,000 presents between their engagement and wedding day, a testament to their global appeal and the widespread excitement surrounding their union. Among the high-profile gifts were a beautifully engraved Steuben glass bowl from the Reagans, an exquisite Art Deco clock from Cartier, and a stunning diamond and sapphire parure, a watch, bracelet, pendant, ring, and earrings from Crown Prince Fahd of Saudi Arabia. Despite the grandeur and magnificence of Prince Charles and Princess Diana's wedding, it was not without its moments of imperfection and mishaps. Behind the facade of regal splendor lay a few unexpected blunders that added a touch of human fallibility to the proceedings. One notable departure from tradition occurred when Diana made the decision to omit the word obey from her vows to Charles. This small but significant deviation reflected Diana's independent spirit and foreshadowed her future as a modern and progressive royal figure. During the recital of their vows, another hiccup occurred when Diana accidentally referred to Charles by the incorrect order of his names. Instead of saying Charles Philip Arthur George, she mistakenly reversed the order, saying Prince Philip Charles. This slip of the tongue drew a momentary pause, but was quickly brushed aside amidst the excitement of the occasion. Charles, too, stumbled over his vows, offering Diana thy goods instead of the more traditional my worldly goods. This minor misstep added a touch of humor to the solemn ceremony and served as a reminder that even royalty are not immune to nervous jitters on their wedding day. However, perhaps the most memorable mishap occurred when Charles forgot to kiss his bride following the exchange of vows, a moment that is typically anticipated with great anticipation by the newlyweds and their guests. The oversight was quickly rectified when, to the delight of the 600,000 spectators gathered outside Buckingham Palace, Charles and Diana shared a spontaneous and heartfelt kiss on the balcony of the palace. This impromptu display of affection served as a charming conclusion to the formal proceedings and endeared the couple to the public even further. Despite the subtle signs hinting at underlying tensions in their marriage, both Prince Charles and Princess Diana, as well as the public, remained largely oblivious during the early stages of their union. 
The first year of their marriage was, on the surface, characterized by an abundance of love and happiness, evident from the very beginning of their honeymoon. Their honeymoon, a grand and extravagant affair, set the tone for the early days of their marriage. The newlyweds embarked on a three-month-long journey, commencing with a 12-day cruise aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia. Sailing through the serene waters, they ventured to exotic locales such as Egypt and the Greek islands, basking in the luxury and romance of their surroundings. Following their maritime adventures, Charles and Diana retreated to the picturesque Balmoral Castle in Scotland, where they spent time at a secluded hunting lodge. Here, amidst the rugged beauty of the Scottish Highlands, they reveled in each other's company, building memories that would last a lifetime. In a letter to her personal secretary, Jane Parsons, written in August 1981, Diana described the honeymoon as perfect, a sentiment that seemed to echo the sentiments of their burgeoning marriage. Upon their return, Diana seamlessly transitioned into her role as a royal consort, accompanying Charles to various public events and engagements. One notable occasion was the state opening of Parliament, where Diana made her debut alongside Charles, marking their first major state event since their wedding. Their public appearances served to reinforce the image of a happy and united couple, further cementing their status as the darlings of the British monarchy. Amidst the whirlwind of royal duties and public engagements, Diana received life-changing news. She was pregnant with their first child. The announcement was met with widespread joy and excitement around the world, as anticipation for the arrival of the royal heir reached fever pitch. However, amidst the external celebrations, Diana grappled with feelings of inadequacy and insecurity. In a poignant revelation, Diana later confessed that she had intentionally thrown herself down a flight of stairs during her pregnancy, driven by overwhelming emotions of inadequacy and despair. Fortunately, neither she nor the unborn child suffered any harm from the incident. On June 21, 1992, Prince Charles and Princess Diana welcomed their much-awaited bundle of joy into the world. Their son, Prince Harry, brought immeasurable happiness and fulfillment to their lives, further solidifying the bond between Charles and Diana, despite the challenges that lay ahead. Princess Diana's decision to give birth to her firstborn at the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital in London was a departure from royal tradition, as royals typically gave birth within the confines of the palace. This choice raised eyebrows and prompted questions from the public and the media, but it was a decision fully supported by Prince Charles. Despite the unconventional setting, Charles stood by Diana's side every step of the way, offering unwavering support and companionship. In a break from royal norms, Prince Charles was present in the delivery room, a first for the royal family. His presence during the birth of his son was a poignant symbol of his commitment to Diana and their growing family. According to reports in People magazine, Diana and the hospital staff had to coordinate William's birth to accommodate Charles's schedule, ensuring that he could be present for the momentous occasion. As Diana endured the pains of labor and the birthing process, Charles remained by her side, providing comfort and reassurance. When the natural birth became too unbearable and William had to be induced, Charles stayed steadfast, offering his support and encouragement throughout. When Prince William finally entered the world, Charles was overcome with joy and gratitude. In a heartfelt letter to his godmother, Patricia Brayborn, he expressed the depth of his emotions, stating that William's arrival meant more to him than he could have ever imagined. He also expressed gratitude for the opportunity to be present at Diana's side during the birth, acknowledging the profound impact it had on their relationship. For Charles, the experience of witnessing William's birth deepened the bond between him and Diana, strengthening their connection in ways they had never imagined. It was a moment of profound joy and fulfillment, marking the beginning of a new chapter in their lives as parents and solidifying their love and commitment to each other.
Prince Charles's joy and excitement about becoming a father extended far beyond the confines of his initial letter to his godmother. In a series of heartfelt letters to close friends, including Hugh and Emily Van Coetzem, Charles expressed his profound happiness and gratitude for the arrival of his firstborn son, Prince William. These intimate correspondences, published as part of an authorized biography by Jonathan Dimbleby titled The Prince of Wales, a Biography, in 1994, offer a glimpse into the depth of Charles's emotions during this monumental time in his life. In his letters, Charles effused with pride and happiness, sharing the news of William's birth and conveying his overwhelming sense of joy at becoming a father. His words resonated with genuine affection and warmth, reflecting the deep bond he felt with his newborn son. Charles's infectious excitement spread to those around him as he eagerly shared the news of William's arrival with his closest friends and confidants. But Charles's enthusiasm was not contained solely within his own circle. His joyous anticipation also resonated with Princess Diana, who shared in his excitement and happiness. Despite the challenges and uncertainties they may have faced in their relationship, the arrival of William brought them together in a shared sense of joy and fulfillment. Diana expressed her delight at William's birth, conveying her gratitude for Charles's unwavering support throughout the birthing process. The birth of Prince Harry, the second child of Prince Charles and Princess Diana, was surrounded by an aura of anticipation and hope. Yet beneath the surface of the royal couple's outwardly idyllic facade, cracks were beginning to appear in their seemingly perfect marriage. Following the fairy tale birth of Prince William and Prince Charles's departure from royal norms by being present at the delivery, Charles and Diana became an iconic couple in the eyes of the world. Their love story captured the imaginations of millions, overshadowing the challenges simmering beneath the surface. However, as Diana's pregnancy with Prince Harry progressed, the strain on their marriage became increasingly evident. Two years after the birth of Prince William, in September 1984, Charles and Diana received the joyful news of their second pregnancy. The announcement of another royal heir was met with widespread excitement and anticipation as the world eagerly awaited the arrival of the newest addition to the royal family. For Diana, the prospect of welcoming a second child brought a mixture of emotions. Just a year prior, she had allegedly suffered a devastating miscarriage shortly after the announcement of her second pregnancy. The trauma of this loss weighed heavily on her, leaving her questioning her ability to endure the rigors of childbirth. She confided in her friends, expressing her fears and doubts about her own strength and resilience. Yet, despite her past struggles, Diana's pregnancy with Prince Harry proved to be a triumph over adversity. The news of her second pregnancy was met with a renewed sense of hope and optimism as she prepared to welcome another precious life into the world. For Diana, the impending arrival of Prince Harry was a testament to her resilience and strength, proving wrong her earlier doubts about her ability to bear children. Despite the joy and anticipation surrounding the arrival of their second child, Charles's reaction to Harry's gender cast a shadow over what should have been a moment of celebration for the royal family. Diana confided in her close friend, James Colthurst, about Charles's disappointment upon learning that she was pregnant with another boy. According to Diana, Charles had been hoping for a daughter, and the news of another son was met with palpable disappointment on his part. Understanding Charles's desire for a daughter, Diana initially attempted to shield him from the truth, concealing the information about Harry's gender from him for as long as possible. Despite her efforts, Diana's attempts to hide the truth were ultimately in vain. By the time of Diana's ultrasound, Charles's hopes for a daughter had already been dashed, when Diana finally gave birth to a baby boy in September 1984, Charles's disappointment was unmistakable. His initial reaction upon hearing the news reflected his lack of enthusiasm for another son, a sentiment that lingered in the days and weeks following Harry's birth. 
In her second biography, Diana revealed the extent of Charles's disappointment at Harry's arrival. His first statement upon seeing the newborn expressed his lack of excitement at the prospect of another son, a sentiment that was not lost on Diana. Furthermore, Charles's disappointment extended to Harry's appearance, as he reportedly expressed disdain for the infant's red hair, a trait that ran in Diana's family. Even at Harry's christening in December, Charles's disappointment remained palpable. He reportedly confided in Diana's mother, expressing his belief that they had thought Harry would be a girl. The revelation of Charles's disappointment underscored the strains in their marriage and hinted at the challenges that lay ahead for the royal couple. The interview with ITN in 1985 marked a pivotal moment in Prince Charles and Princess Diana's public relationship, offering a rare glimpse into the dynamics of their marriage and the challenges they faced as a royal couple. While the couple sought to dispel rumors and present a united front to the world, the interview inadvertently revealed the cracks in their relationship that would ultimately lead to its unraveling. During the interview, journalist Alistair Burnett broached the topic of Diana's struggle to adapt to life in the public eye, a struggle that Diana openly acknowledged. As a young bride thrust into the spotlight of royal duty, Diana grappled with the pressures and expectations placed upon her, finding herself ill-prepared for the intense scrutiny of public life. When asked if there was anything she would have liked to change about Prince Charles, Diana responded with a diplomatic denial, seeking to maintain a facade of marital harmony. However, it was Prince Charles's response to a question about marital disagreements that would have a lasting impact on Diana. In response to Burnett's inquiry about whether the couple ever fought, Prince Charles made a veiled acknowledgement of the challenges they faced, stating that all couples have their disagreements. While seemingly innocuous, Charles's comment struck a chord with Diana, triggering feelings of hurt and betrayal that would later come to define their marriage. Diana later revealed that Prince Harry's birth, which had initially brought the couple closer together, served as the catalyst for the deterioration of their relationship. In the weeks leading up to Harry's birth, Diana and Charles had found solace and companionship in each other, forging a bond that seemed unbreakable. However, the joy of Harry's arrival soon gave way to heartbreak as Charles resumed his affair with his ex-girlfriend, Camilla Parker Bowles. Diana's worst fears were realized as Charles's infidelity shattered the fragile trust between them. The betrayal cut deep, leaving Diana traumatized and disillusioned with the fairy tale image of her marriage. Despite her efforts to salvage their relationship, Diana was unable to compete with Charles's enduring affection for Camilla, whose presence loomed large over their marriage. For Diana, the realization that Charles had resumed his relationship with Camilla was nothing short of devastating. In her eyes, it represented the ultimate betrayal, shattering the fragile trust that remained between them and plunging her into a maelstrom of anguish and despair. She described it as the worst day of her life, a moment when the illusion of her fairy tale marriage came crashing down around her. Desperate to salvage her crumbling marriage, Diana summoned every ounce of courage she possessed and confronted Camilla face to face at a birthday party in 1989. It was a daring and courageous act, one that Diana regarded as the bravest she had undertaken in her 10 year marriage to Prince Charles. With unwavering resolve, Diana confronted Camilla, making it clear that she was aware of the affair between her and Charles and imploring her to end their illicit relationship. However, Diana's courageous confrontation proved to be in vain. Despite her heartfelt plea, the affair between Charles and Camilla only intensified, fueling further heartache and turmoil for Diana. The clandestine nature of their relationship began to unravel when a salacious telephone conversation between the pair was leaked to the press in 1989. The leaked transcript of the intimate conversation, which quickly became known as Camilla Gate, sent shockwaves through the tabloid media. Initially published by an Australian newspaper followed by a German publication, the scandalous details of Charles and Camilla's relationship soon made headlines in British tabloids, thrusting their affair into the spotlight for the world to see. 
the public revelation of Camilla Gate exposed the sordid details of Charles and Camilla's affair, laying bare the depths of their betrayal. Camilla, already married to Andrew Parker Bowles, found herself at the center of a media firestorm, her reputation tarnished by her involvement with the future King of England. The public revelation of Prince Charles's affair with Camilla Parker Bowles sent shockwaves through the British monarchy, prompting a seismic shift in the public's perception of the royal family. To mitigate the damage to the monarchy's reputation, Prince Charles made the unprecedented decision to address the affair head-on in a live television interview with journalist Jonathan Dimbleby. During the interview, Dimbleby posed the question that was on everyone's minds. Was Prince Charles faithful during his marriage to Princess Diana? In a moment of startling candor, Charles initially responded in the affirmative, claiming that he had been faithful until his marriage had irretrievably broken down. It was a bold admission that laid bare the cracks in his marriage and shattered the carefully constructed facade of royal propriety. Princess Diana, in turn, offered her own candid assessment of their fractured relationship during her now iconic 1995 interview for BBC One's Panorama. With a mixture of vulnerability and defiance, Diana famously remarked that their marriage had become too crowded, alluding to the presence of a third party, Camilla, in their relationship. It was a poignant acknowledgement of the betrayal and heartache she had endured at the hands of her husband and his mistress. In the aftermath of Charles's confession, the scandal surrounding the affair reached new heights when Camilla and her husband, Andrew Parker Bowles, announced their plans to divorce. The revelation that they had been living apart for two years only fueled speculation that a divorce between Charles and Diana was imminent, further tarnishing the image of the royal family. Amidst swirling rumors of marital discord, whispers of Princess Diana's own infidelity began to emerge. Allegations surfaced that Diana had embarked on a clandestine affair with Army Captain James Hewitt, beginning in 1986 and lasting for four tumultuous years. Hewitt's tell-all memoir and subsequent interviews laid bare the details of their relationship, with Hewitt asserting that Diana's affair was a response to Charles's betrayal. The announcement of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's separation on December 9, 1992, marked a significant turning point in the history of the British monarchy. Prime Minister John Major delivered the news in a solemn public appearance before the House of Commons, confirming the long-standing rumors that had plagued the royal couple's marriage. Major's announcement emphasized that the separation was reached amicably, with both Diana and Charles agreeing to co-parent their two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. However, the stark contrast in their whereabouts at the time of the announcement, Charles visiting an old folks' home in London while Diana attended a clinic in northeast England, underscored the geographical and emotional distance that had come to define their relationship. Despite assertions from Buckingham Palace that there was no third party involved in the couple's separation, rumors continued to swirl about the role of extramarital affairs in the breakdown of their marriage. The palace dismissed speculation surrounding Charles and Diana's respective infidelities as mere rumors, insisting that the decision to separate was made at the behest of Queen Elizabeth II herself. However, the publication of transcripts from a recorded phone call between Diana and her friend James Gilby in early January 1990 added fuel to the fire of speculation. Dubbed the Squidgygate scandal by the media, the transcripts revealed intimate exchanges between Diana and Gilby, with Gilby affectionately referring to Diana as Squidgy or Squidge. While the contents of the conversation were not as salacious as those of Charles's infamous Camilla Gate call, they nevertheless fueled suspicions about the nature of Diana's relationships outside of her marriage. The unexpected appearance of Princess Diana and Prince Charles together after their separation sent shockwaves through the public and media alike, sparking speculation about the state of their relationship and the possibility of reconciliation. The couple's surprise appearance occurred on May 30, 1993, 
at the commemoration service marking the 50th anniversary of the Battle of the Atlantic. Arriving together on the Royal Yacht Britannia, Diana and Charles attended the service at the world's largest Anglican cathedral, seemingly in good spirits and displaying a sense of camaraderie. Their joint presence at such a significant event fueled hopes of a potential reconciliation between the estranged couple, leading many to believe that their marriage could be on the path to healing. However, the glimmer of hope for reconciliation was short-lived as the commemoration service marked the last public appearance of Diana and Charles together as a couple. Despite the brief moment of unity, the reality of their separation soon resurfaced, casting a shadow over any hopes of a reunion. The couple's next joint appearance occurred on December 25, 1993, during the annual Christmas walk in Sandringham, where Diana joined the entire royal family for the traditional holiday gathering. While the outward display of unity during the Christmas festivities may have hinted at a semblance of normalcy, behind the scenes, Diana and Charles were leading increasingly separate lives. In the years following their separation, Diana and Charles focused on their individual pursuits and responsibilities. Diana, ever committed to her philanthropic endeavors, immersed herself in charity work, visiting hospitals, and advocating for causes close to her heart. She also sought to further develop her public speaking skills, enlisting the guidance of voice coach Peter Setlin to refine her oratory abilities. Meanwhile, Prince Charles diligently fulfilled his royal duties, attending official engagements and representing the monarchy both at home and abroad. Despite the growing distance between them, both Diana and Charles remained dedicated to their respective roles within the royal family, navigating the complexities of their separation while maintaining a sense of duty to their public obligations. The announcement from Buckingham Palace on December 21, 1995, marked a pivotal moment in the tumultuous saga of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's marriage. Queen Elizabeth II, in a letter addressed to the estranged couple, urged them to pursue a formal divorce, signaling the definitive end of their union. While the news came as a somber acknowledgement of the irreconcilable differences that had plagued their relationship, it also marked the beginning of a new chapter for both Diana and Charles. In the months that followed the Queen's intervention, Diana carefully considered her options weighing the implications of severing ties with the royal family against the prospect of reclaiming her autonomy and independence. On February 29, 1996, Diana's spokesperson revealed that she had made the difficult decision to proceed with the divorce, signaling her acceptance of the inevitable conclusion to her marriage with Charles. Despite the emotional gravity of the situation, Diana remained resolute in her determination to navigate the divorce process with dignity and grace. Retaining her title as Princess of Wales, she faced the daunting task of negotiating the terms of her separation from Charles. The couple convened at St. James's Palace on the same day as the announcement to discuss the logistics of their divorce, a meeting that marked the beginning of a protracted and often contentious negotiation process. Over the course of four months, Diana and Charles grappled with the intricacies of untangling their lives from one another, addressing matters ranging from financial settlements to custody arrangements for their two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. On July 15, 1996, their efforts culminated in the granting of their divorce by the courts, officially bringing an end to their marriage of 15 years. The granting of the divorce decree on July 15, 1996, served as a poignant reminder of the profound sadness that accompanied the dissolution of their once celebrated union. For Diana and Charles, it marked the culmination of a tumultuous journey fraught with heartache and disappointment, but also resilience and growth. Finally, on August 28, 1996, the decree absolute the legal document signaling the irrevocable dissolution of their marriage was released, bringing closure to a chapter in their lives that had captivated the world. The aftermath of Princess Diana and Prince Charles's divorce 
was marked by a flurry of legal negotiations and personal adjustments as both parties sought to navigate the complexities of their newfound independence. For Diana, the dissolution of her marriage brought with it a mixture of relief, sadness, and uncertainty as she embarked on a new chapter of her life. On the day of the divorce, Diana found herself grappling with a whirlwind of emotions as she prepared for an engagement at the English National Ballet. Despite the facade of composure she maintained in public, privately, she confided in her brother-in-law, Sir Robert Fellows, about the emotional weight of the day's proceedings. As she received well wishes and support from loved ones, Diana confronted the bittersweet reality of bidding farewell to her role as a member of the royal family. In the weeks and months that followed the divorce, the details of Diana and Charles's settlement were revealed, shedding light on the terms of their separation. Diana, while forced to relinquish the prestigious title of Her Royal Highness, retained the cherished title of Princess of Wales, a symbolic acknowledgement of her enduring connection to the royal lineage. The decision to strip Diana of her HRH title was reportedly a contentious point of negotiation, with Charles advocating for its removal, despite the Queen's initial inclination to allow Diana to retain it. However, despite the loss of her HRH designation, Diana's settlement afforded her a measure of financial security and personal autonomy. She retained her apartments at Kensington Palace, providing her with a familiar sanctuary amidst the upheaval of divorce. Additionally, Diana was granted access to jets utilized by the royal family, affording her the freedom to travel and pursue her philanthropic endeavors with greater ease. Furthermore, Diana was granted the privilege of utilizing the state apartments at St. James's Palace for entertainment purposes. Further solidifying her status as a respected member of the royal family, despite the dissolution of her marriage. These concessions underscored the Queen's desire to ensure Diana's continued involvement in the royal sphere, albeit in a more limited capacity. Central to Diana's settlement was a substantial lump sum payment of $22.5 million in cash, providing her with a financial cushion as she embarked on her new life. This lump sum represented a significant acknowledgement of Diana's contributions and sacrifices during her marriage to Charles, affording her a measure of financial security and independence moving forward. In addition to the lump sum payment, Diana was granted an annual allowance of $600,000 to support the operation of her private office, which was responsible for managing her charitable endeavors and royal duties. However, this allowance was slated to end in September 1996, signaling a transition to self-sufficiency as Diana assumed responsibility for her financial affairs. Despite the cessation of her office allowance, Diana retained access to the jewelry she had acquired during her marriage, ensuring that she maintained a connection to her royal heritage and the symbols of her past. Moreover, Diana was granted continued access to the air transport resources of both the British royal family and government, providing her with logistical support and protection as she navigated her post-divorce life. Crucially, Diana was offered ongoing security protection from the Metropolitan Police's Royalty Protection Group, ensuring her safety and well-being as she traveled with her sons and pursued her philanthropic endeavors. This provision underscored the recognition of Diana's unique status as a beloved and high-profile figure, necessitating robust security measures to safeguard her against potential threats. Despite the weight of her divorce and the challenges it presented, Diana approached her new chapter with characteristic resilience and optimism. She viewed her divorce as a catalyst for personal growth and renewal, embracing the opportunity to forge her own path and define her identity on her own terms. Princess Diana's life after her divorce from Prince Charles was marked by a series of private relationships that captured the public's imagination while revealing her longing for love and companionship outside the constraints of royal protocol. One significant relationship that emerged shortly after her divorce was with Dr. Hasnat Khan, a respected heart and lung surgeon whom Diana met in September 1995. Their relationship, 
which lasted for two years, was characterized by a commitment to privacy and discretion as both Diana and Khan sought to shield their romance from the relentless scrutiny of the media. Despite their efforts, reporters eventually caught wind of their affair, thrusting their private lives into the spotlight. Nonetheless, Diana and Khan endeavored to maintain a sense of normalcy in their relationship, with Diana affectionately nicknaming him Mr. Wonderful as a testament to her admiration and love for him. However, despite the apparent affection between them, Diana and Khan's relationship ultimately faltered, coming to an abrupt end after two years. While there were differing accounts regarding the reasons for their breakup, Khan later admitted that his reluctance to embrace the public spotlight played a significant role in their decision to part ways. Indeed, Khan's discomfort with the attention that accompanied his relationship with Diana was evident in his reluctance to speak publicly about their romance, with his only public acknowledgement of Diana's qualities coming during a courtroom testimony. In the midst of speculation surrounding her relationship with Khan, Diana found herself embroiled in further controversy when reports surfaced linking her to the married art dealer Oliver Hoare. Although Hoare's obituary later claimed that he had been romantically involved with Diana, she vehemently denied any such relationship, insisting that their connection was purely platonic. Additionally, Diana's name was linked by the press to other individuals, including rugby union player Will Carling, and private equity investor Theodore J. Forstmann. However, these claims remained unsubstantiated, leaving the true nature of Diana's relationships with these individuals shrouded in mystery. Following her relationship with Dr. Hasnat Khan, Princess Diana's romantic life took a highly publicized turn with her involvement with Dodi Fayed, a prominent film producer and the son of billionaire businessman Mohammed Al Fayed. Unlike her previous relationship, Diana's romance with Dodi Fayed was marked by intense media scrutiny and relentless paparazzi attention. Their relationship quickly became infamous, with cameras trailing their every move and capturing their most intimate moments. One of the most photographed periods of their relationship occurred during the summer of 1997, when Dodi Fayed extended an invitation for Diana to join him and his family in the picturesque setting of the south of France. Escaping the prying eyes of the Royal Protection Squad, Diana and Dodi Fayed retreated to the opulent surroundings of the Fayed family compound, where they enjoyed the luxurious amenities and expansive security detail provided by Mohammed Al Fayed. It was during this idyllic summer that Mohammed Al Fayed purchased the Jonakal, a lavish multi million pound yacht, which served as the backdrop for many of Diana and Dodi's romantic escapades. Throughout the summer of 1997, Diana and Dodi Fayed embarked on leisurely cruises along the stunning coastline of the south of France, reveling in the freedom and privacy afforded by the expansive expanse of the Mediterranean Sea. Their days were filled with sun-soaked adventures, intimate conversations, and moments of quiet reflection as they basked in the warmth of each other's company. However, their romantic interlude was not confined to the shores of the Mediterranean. In a bid to further escape the prying eyes of the media, Diana and Dodi Fayed embarked on a fateful journey to Paris, where tragedy would ultimately strike. Despite the looming shadow of uncertainty that hung over their final days together, Diana and Dodi Fayed remained steadfast in their affection for one another, cherishing every fleeting moment of their ill-fated romance. The summer of 1997 was meant to be a time of respite and rejuvenation for Princess Diana, a chance to escape the relentless scrutiny of the public eye and bask in the warmth of newfound love. However, tragedy would soon shatter the idyllic tranquility of Diana's summer romance with Dodi Fayed. On the fateful night of August 31, 1997, the world was left reeling in shock as news broke of a horrific car crash in the Pont de l'Alma Tunnel in Paris. Princess Diana, alongside her companion Dodi Fayed and their driver Henri Paul, was tragically killed in the crash. 
The cause of the accident was later attributed to the intoxicated state of Henry Paul, who was speeding at a staggering 121 miles per hour while being pursued by a throng of paparazzi. The untimely demise of Diana and Doty brought an abrupt end to their budding romance, leaving a void in the hearts of millions and casting a pall of grief over the global community. Yet, amidst the overwhelming sorrow and loss, there lingered a sense of what could have been, a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of love and the fragility of life. Tragically, Diana's death occurred at a time when the possibility of reconciliation with her estranged husband, Prince Charles, seemed within reach. Just days before the fatal accident, Charles had surprised Diana with an unexpected visit to Kensington Palace on her 35th birthday. Their reunion was marked by a lighthearted and playful exchange, a stark contrast to the strained and acrimonious relationship that had characterized their later years of marriage. In a fleeting moment of levity, Diana jokingly accused Charles of coming to take her furniture away, sparking laughter and shared cups of Earl Grey tea between the former spouses. It was a brief but poignant glimpse into what might have been, a moment of warmth and camaraderie that hinted at the possibility of reconciliation and renewed affection. The passing of Princess Diana on that tragic August night sent shockwaves across the globe, leaving an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of humanity. As the world grappled with the profound sense of loss, hopes for a more amicable relationship or even a friendship between Diana and Prince Charles were abruptly extinguished, replaced by a somber realization of what might have been. Diana's funeral held with solemn reverence and attended by dignitaries and mourners from around the world, became an event of unparalleled significance, symbolizing the end of an era and the dawn of a new chapter in royal history. Among the mourners, Prince Charles's presence stood as a poignant reminder of the complex and deeply intertwined bond he shared with his former wife. However, it was not just Prince Charles's presence at Diana's funeral that garnered attention. It was his choice of attire that stirred controversy and ignited debate among observers. Instead of adhering to the traditional black mourning attire expected at such solemn occasions, Prince Charles opted for a navy suit, a decision that raised eyebrows and elicited criticism from some quarters. Yet beneath the surface of this seemingly unconventional choice, lay a deeper, more profound symbolism. Prince Charles's decision to wear the Navy uniform was not merely a sartorial preference, but a heartfelt tribute to his beloved former wife, Princess Diana. It was a subtle yet powerful acknowledgement of Diana's own preferences and desires, a gesture of respect and remembrance that spoke volumes about the depth of their shared history and the enduring bond they had once shared. What do you think about the facts surrounding King Charles's life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.